the manifestation the water so it's represented the four elements are represented water oh. earth flowers oh. water earth fire and essence is air and the picture means the ether the fifth element the consciousness inherent in manifestation that's what the puja means oh. How to get some cool. asbestos out of there. Mm. Oh, you know, well, oh, do you know anyone that moves asbestos? Can no. I, I te email you and you'll email sure. me a number? Yeah. Great, that would be great. Mm. Mm. Yeah, John, we have a new sadhu at the house and he's made out totally out of asbestos. So we thought, no, I'm just kidding. Oh, shit. <laughs> this is good. Is the statistic? It's all. It's all. Yeah. We've solved all the problems. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we saved the world. Yes. Yeah. Very safe. Yeah. Yeah. The only way to change the world is changing the people. And the best way to change the people is uh, in education. Because when you are old, we are difficult to change. <laughs> but if you, that's why for us the school project is very important. Because really you affect a lot of people. Because you affect the parents, you affect the children, and you know, and you give the children these tools, these very same tools, little by little, throughout their education, and it's working very well in Spain. Mm. Do, you talk, hmm? do you talk about God, though, when you talk? See, oh, yeah, yeah. See, I don't know if we could talk about God. Oh, maybe. yes, you can. It's just a matter of how you say, yeah, how you, how you, you know, it's just a matter of language. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think we can use that word. Well, no, you can use whatever you want. You know, in, in the No, you, in, they would tell you the same thing in Spain. You can use the word, but you can't promote a religion. You can talk right. about religions, compare oh, really? religions. Which is what we do. We can't promote one religion word, over another. Which is what we do. We don't, know, we don't promote Buddhism or Christianism right. or... But we speak about the concept, the concept of God, and you can say, look, the laws of God and the laws of nature are the same, and that's it. I mean, what's the problem? Okay, well, I didn't know you could use that word in school. Well, as long as you don't use it as to promote, say, Christianity over another religion. No, you can, you can really do it. You know, it, they would tell you the same thing in Spain. I mean, in European, are even more like, uh, you know, they... Because you can't say the start, I mean, you can't pledge allegiance to the flag because of one nation under God anymore. Yeah, we do. Oh, we do. We I don't understand that. I don't know what school got rid of the pledge. We do what? No school that I've ever taught in or been no, heard of got rid of the pledge. Yeah. Well, All they do is what? allow students to be silent and yeah. meditate if they don't want to do the pledge. Oh, but right. no. No, but they didn't get Is it true time. that you're not allowed to? Because I see people it. complain. See, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I thought it was a thing. I read it. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't in the original. Jane still isn't. Yeah, he 
we should get rid of the whole thing. That was a very That's late time. That's probably the only time you say God, though. They don't like twitching. You never talk about God except for you. Well, but that is because there is this allergy to the word God because it is interpreted as this person with beard and uh, at 1,000 to... But God is just a concept. I mean, it's just a word. Yeah. Right. And you know, and it's just a concept that different people conceptualize in different ways. Yeah, right. <laughs> but it's yeah. none else but a concept. And you know, and to take away, I mean, you can, I can convince any principal or any whatever of any school that you can avoid in education uh, uh, the word God when it is used by what half of the population of this world or more probably more than half of the population you know you, you, it's stupid i mean how can you do that <laughs> it's like saying no we, are, we can't speak about biology but why <laughs> you can speak because it's part of our society in the same way they study history <laughs> or and also Spiritual training, which is what, what <coughs> children require, <coughs> is something that the schools are not providing. What's that? What did you say? Spiritual training, I mean, spiritual teachings. The schools are not providing spiritual teachings. So the schools give you a lot of information about the objective world, but give you no information about your subjective experience of this world. And you have to give that. You have to give that to raise healthy children so that they can deal with their emotions, that they can deal with their thoughts, that they understand life, that they understand why are they here, that they learn to calm their minds. You need to teach all these things. If you don't teach that with the over-information that is there, because exactly because you have to think about what the, how different is the situation when I was young which is probably the same cases of the ones that are of my age in this room <coughs> the information I received at home and at the school and in the little TV I was allowed to see <laughs> uh, was basically the same same information now children receive mm, lots of information from lots of different places, most of them contradictory. And they don't have a way to find within themselves the discernment of what is true and what is not true. And, they, and if you don't provide them with that, in this over-information mm -hmm. world, you are you you take them the compass you you leave them without a compass and and that's why they are many of them are so lost these days in every country in every country so let's start with a couple of minutes meditation
So, we've seen actions, we've seen thoughts, the mind, how to deal with thoughts, summary of the thoughts, balance positive with negative, um, quick judgments, start to look at yourself, see, because you, when you see the world, in reality what you are seeing is your impression. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the world you are seeing which is your circumstances and your impressions are a mirror image one of each other because they grew together they grew at the same time they came about together so um, you know with thoughts you have the quick judgments what you have to do when you get the anti-Matilda practices you know you have to deal with that you know, you get uh, you get going with the behavior of someone. You know, you have to compensate that. You have to do it in the day that happened, that happens. You have to just concentrate in balancing each day. Uh, if you concentrate on the day you have to live, then you will be little by little more and more conscious of the day you are living you will be little by little more conscious of the consciousness that is inherent in this manifestation. Beth was asking me that why there is water in the puja. Uh, the puja represents the manifestation. So it has like the four elements. Water, uh, the earth, which is the fruits and the flowers, uh, fire, which is the candles, uh, and the air, which is the incense. So those are the four elements. And the, the Guru Shakti picture, or the Buddha, or whomever you put there, it represents the fifth element, the ether. They call them, they call the Greeks called it ether, which is the consciousness, which is inherent in manifestation. So the puja is like a symbol of manifestation the four elements and the inner and consciousness in manifestation. Um, so thoughts, to continue with thoughts. You have to start discarding all the lies of your mind, of the mind chatter. You know, the lies, the manipulations, the projections, all these things, you have to discard them all the time. You have to find the way to live a life of truth like you agreed to do in, um, in, in the initiation and you know like the initiation of Guru Raj tape initiation says you know uh, to live a life of truth and righteousness truth so you have to stick to truth very important so you have to find you have to become an integral person and you have to find the way that you think, you speak, and you act in coordination. This is another thing that normally we don't do. And you know, you have to be aware. If you are thinking one thing and saying another thing, yeah. you have to find the solution to that. Either you change your thought or you change what you say, but you cannot keep the contradiction. Uh, and the same applies to your actions. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so, you know, stick to the truth, stick to the truth of facts also, it's part of the exercises of thoughts. You know, and if you practice, and you, pra uh, you practice these, these simple practices every day, what will happen is that you will start 
enjoying you will start seeing a lot of adventure in every day first thing that will happen is that days will become longer for you because you get more more information out of the day so the day kind of becomes like a longer day the time expands and 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 the day becomes a very interesting thing little by little <coughs> like when you were children you might remember when you were children and you woke up to a new day it was like oof a whole day you know it was like how many things i can I do, do well you get back to that that feeling you will get back to that feeling and and uh, you know and you will uh, stop wanting to be enlightened <laughs> because you will have enough with your day it, it will be enjoyable enough Okay. Uh, and that is important because it is one of the most uh, stupid things is wanting to be enlightened. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. really, because you, you don't even know what you are wanting, and well, in reality, in reality, <laughs> most people simply what they want is to get rid of their problems, and they think, well, if I get enlightened, then I have no problem. <laughs> no problem. Or a, a misconception, a very, you know, just from teaching, a very misconception is people want to have no thoughts. I mean, it's just surprising how many people yes. have that will say that. Yes. I don't want to have any thoughts. Yeah. Well, as Guruji said, there is a very good technique for that. And you use a baseball bat. <laughs> <laughs> you use a baseball bat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I mean, talk about putting pressure on yourself. <laughs> In all of this discussion, do you find, um, like, how do you work with this idea that so many of my students just feel totally out of control of their mind? Like, they can't seem to separate their mind. Like, it's your mind that's getting you to think like that. You know, it's like, oh, my mind is too busy. Oh, I can't get rid of thoughts. Or, well, I only. Well, you, you know, know it's, well, it's yeah, like people will say these things. Back and they're like, but do, oh, do you do the chant with them? Um, I started to. Well, in my really, last class, the first well, time. As soon I, you, I do the chant the first time I see, you know, the first for the first meeting. I just explain the general concepts like I did in the first class here with the three new people. and. And it's perfect because they get into meditation, their mind quietens, and they have an experience of meditation, and then they realize, you know, that that you know it's a technique and it works, and, and you know, you only need to explain it in a way that they, you know people understand what they are doing. That's all you need to do. So there is something to what you are saying, I, I will tell you my experience, which is that a lot of the people that I run into do not separate what they think from themselves. Yeah, well, 99% is the case. Yes, <laughs> and, I, and I didn't either until I somehow got taught how to do this, and it didn't happen right away, but it, no, it happened over time. time. It happens over time. But right. I didn't even know that it was happening in a certain sense. Like I wasn't, nobody was really guiding me that way exactly, but I was all of a sudden able to stand back more and to realize that there's this thing happening. I don't have to believe everything that's going across the screen. Mm -hmm. Once you start that, that just gets bigger if you keep doing it. Sometimes even if you don't keep doing it. But you begin to, your conscious, I, I think of it as my consciousness changed a little bit, you know, so that then what happens is there's room for doubt about all these lies, about all this stuff I think I, I believe. And then the squirrel cage doesn't own you as much. All that, that they can't get rid of, that they can't, they want to get rid of those thoughts. But the deal is, is that really thoughts are there you can slow them down if you're really good, maybe for more than a few seconds or a minute or so, or if you're a realized man, I don't know what he does, but I can tell you, I can get it really slow, but I can be out the door doing something and all of a sudden it's a rat race and I gotta get back to center. 
just a little bit so that I'm not overwhelmed. So it's a process and it's a practice and it's one day at a time and you have to, you cannot just be there tomorrow. So it's, that's, that's the best encouragement you can give them, is that it does actually happen. Just encourage them to keep at it. Yeah, exactly. Because we're not with them long enough. Exactly, but if, Just you know, if you, if you teach them well, and you, one of the things that we do is that we follow up through the online system. You know, we are not going to have time, but you know, if we had the time, I would teach you how to use the online system classroom which is not difficult to use and you could use it with your students so you know once they finish a course I make a follow-up every week and I put them what techniques have you done and through the system I you know encourage them and you know I keep if you manage to get them doing all the techniques with actions with thoughts with feelings the tratta, the mantra the everything the the prayer, the good morning day, and you get them doing that, you know, in no time people transform. You don't need months and months. You know, eight weeks uh, is enough to get them going as for them to then could continue by themselves if they want, you know. It's good to have a sangha so that they can come to meditate, but at the end of the day, the path they have to walk it, nobody can walk it for them. You, uh, the teacher will help with, with, with the, the natural transfer of Shakti that is produced in the act of teaching. Uh, and that energizes the other person. But that energy, if it's not put into practice because you adapt yourself to the discipline, well, then you are not a disciple and then you don't get the benefits. So, the, the discipline, doing it, like Father Thomas Keating says, doing it is the primary discipline. <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> let's go now to, to the feelings. To feelings. Now, obviously... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so what all spiritual traditions will explain you is that the feeling is the main feeling, the mother of all feelings is love. Mm -hmm. Love is the white light and then the emotions which are also felt is that love translated by the mind. So you want to connect with love and you, you get that in the Buddhist teachings with compassion and the Christian teachings with love each other and the reality is that if you wake up in the morning feeling love, mm. then love takes you. You don't need to even practice anything. <laughs> so, but love, you cannot force love upon you. You know, you can only... Guruji used to say, you cannot call the butterflies to your garden, but you can plant flowers and then butterflies come by themselves. So all the discipline, all the practices is in reality putting those flowers so that eventually you start waking up, loving everything around you. And that, is, that, happens, that happens 
naturally and you don't even notice it simply little by little you start waking up more lovingly till you wake up loving everything and then then it's very easy because you love what whatever is going on you are loving it and you are understanding it also because love brings understanding you only understand what you love you don't understand what you don't love even einstein had to love you know mathematics and the universe and all these things in order to understand it without love you don't understand anything love is the light with which you understand things so um, i'm putting this uh, satsang of guru raj that speaks about this concept and other concepts that we have touched uh, uh, all this time and i will be interrupting it to add some commentaries So this is big time. You'd be surprised I'm keeping myself together. <laughs> <laughs> yourself together through the power of love. Some of the scriptures also to say, love thy neighbor as yourself. Huh? But I would add on to that, not only your neighbor. He is my neighbor. That's my neighbor. This is my neighbor. So who is the doer? Mm. But I need to cognize. And that is why we've given this mind to the thinking ability which separates you from an animal. Mm. And what should the mind be thinking? Mm. That everything in this world is good. you recognize that everything is good, slowly the one O in good will be rubbed away. It will fade away and there's only God. Okay. The problem is the mind. And when you can transcend it, go beyond it and watch it act, and there's another part of you that will tell you mm, this part of the art will tell you ah, the mind is playing tricks let it have fun who cares you become the observer and then nothing can affect you mm? and what really observes is not you but the real doer he is also the observer. When you are observing and you are becoming conscious, say, of your mind, it's not your mind that becomes conscious. The observer is not the mind, it's the object that you are observing. And the observer and the doer, which is God, is the same thing. So who's the doer? That's who Jesus. So when you reach that area of being able to observe objectively, then the mind will not affect you. Hmm? It will not affect you because you've become non-attached from the mind. You let the mind perform. Let the mind do what it, will, it wants to do. To hell with it. Hmm? And when that is ingrained within you, 
you will be pouring out to that heart that is within you. Hmm? The true master might analyze your mind, but his greater job is to open your heart. Hmm? And when the heart is open, you become more and more receptive to everything around you because the heart only sees and feels and acts in goodness which is godliness. Ain't God good? <laughs> he sure is. <laughs> So, when we stop thinking of ourselves as the doer, what happens is this, that we are surrendering to a higher force which is in us and all around us. But the easiest place to start from is a place in us. Hmm? Because if you have some cognition and recognition of what is in you, you will automatically project it to everything outside you. Hmm? That is how one starts. That's how one starts. Until you feel that there is nothing outside you. Everything is inside you. So this is the process that you start off with a duality and you progress to qualified non-duality and the last step is total non-duality. If everything is found to be within you, what can hurt you? Nothing can hurt you. Because no one purposely would like to hurt themselves. Huh? Yes. And with the sense... Now, this concept, uh, which is... I'm going to show you a couple of videos. He's just, and his verbiage, right? He's so good. He's just so great, you know, and his play on words, and I know. Use the projector against itself. Make it project divinity everywhere. <laughs> oh, God. Do you have these downloaded or are they YouTube? Are they on YouTube? Uh, all, all, all these ones are in YouTube. You can find them in YouTube. I'm trying to find... What uh, one is no, that called? Uh, Ego. Okay, so I'm going to put you this this concept, the very same concept, which is that you start with duality, which means to begin with 
you feel yourself to be a separate entity. Mm -hmm. You perceive yourself and you experience yourself like I am this entity and there is the other, the other is the world and normally you will see it like, you know, threatening. <laughs> <laughs> the, the other is threatening, could, you know, run over me in any moment. Mm -hmm. So that's duality. You are here and then there is the other. Little by little, you start realizing that in fact you live within an interdependence mm -hmm. and you start to feel part of something. You still feel separate, but you feel part of something like a leaf of a tree you are a leaf of a tree you are a leaf separate but part of the tree so and that is non-qualified duality total non-duality is when you realize that in reality there is only one thing that there has never been any other thing but that one thing and then you realize that everything is you and as Guruji says, when, once you realize that, nothing can hurt you because nobody would hurt himself. Now, this very same concept explained by a Buddhist monk, some of you may know him, is Thich, Thich Nhat Hanh. Thich Nhat Hanh. Yeah. Uh, one thing, Ramon, so the reason... Uh, yeah, tell me. So the reason we are well, I guess we're not born. We have this sense of duality that maybe comes around, I don't know, seven or eight or whatever, is why we're here on Earth so we could be the observer, so we can learn to come back to who we are so we could observe? Or well, you know, I, it's just the process of nature. It's just the process of evolution, okay, you know? It's just the process of evolution. It's just the process of evolution and... and, and that's a form of life uh, in evolution but what you are which is that consciousness is not the body is not the mind is not the emotions you know that's why death doesn't exist because what you are in reality was never born and we will never die your body yes will die and your little ego will die and disappear and in no time neither your family will know about it as I said the first day so don't try to protect something which is already condemned <laughs> to oblivion. So this is the same concept explained by this Buddhist monk. And he does it with a lot of sense of humor. My friend, my right hand uh, uh, has written all the poems that I, uh, uh, I compose. My left hand uh, has not written any poem, but my right hand has, does not think that uh, uh, you, you, left hand, you, have, you are good for nothing. <laughs> my right hand does not have uh, the, the complex of superiority at all. That is why it is very happy. And my left hand does not have any complex at, uh, at all, including the complex of inferiority. So in my two hands there is a kind of wisdom called wisdom of non-discrimination. And when uh, uh, one day I remember I was uh, driving a nail and my right hand was not uh, very firm. Instead of pounding on the nail, it pound on the little finger. It uh, put uh, the hammer down and it took care of the right and left hand in a very gentle way. As if it took care of itself. And it does not say, you left hand, you know that I, the right hand, has taken good care of you and you have to remember that, you have to pay uh, back sometime in the future. There's no such a thinking. And my left hand does not uh, say like, like this, you, the right hand, has, been, has done me a lot of harm. Give me, give me that hammer. I go, <laughs> I, was, I want justice. Because the two hands, we know that they are together, they are in each other's. Well, that's the concept. It's only one. So you don't want just this, really. <laughs> 
So that's that's that. And now I'm going to put you um, the same concept by this Catholic priest mm -hmm. that we. So Ramon, the wisdom of non-discrimination is that you do not discriminate one thing different from another. Exactly, mm -hmm. as different as being non-different to from you. Yourself. In reality, take into consideration that what you are perceiving. What you are knowing of this world, it's your own self. I mean, you 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 are knowing your 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 impressions really, which are reflected in your circumstances, and and it's not different to you. It's exactly you. It's the same thing. And in reality, the real you is the whole thing. No, but you start from duality to qualified non-duality to total non-duality. Now this is well. What about Trump? Eh? What about Trump? <laughs> That's just easy. Yeah, Tr like, well, Trump, Trump, Trump is also yeah. part of all of us. I mean, yeah, you, it's part of the it's part of the circumstances, part of this world, part of what is needed in the in, in the actual evolution. And we are just forms in evolution. That's it, uh, you know. And this is the play of God. You know, Shakespeare used to say, life is a play, and he said it in the two senses, like play as a theater and play as a game. Mm -hmm. You know, because life mm -hmm. is a play and a game, and you can, it's enjoyable, even if you are King Lear or Hamlet or whatever the case might be. Mm -hmm. So this is the Catholic monk explaining the same concept in Catholic terms. Father Thomas Keating. Now he's probably the most revered figure in the Christian contemplative movement today. Summarizes the journey this way. The beginning of the spiritual journey is, is the realization, not just the information, but the, the real interior conviction that there is a higher power or God or to make it as easy as possible for everybody that there is an other capital O. Now first step is that you realize so that that there is a higher power. You know it's in if you see if you remember the satsang of Guru Raj, he says you surrender to a higher force. No, so there is a higher power. You realize that. You realize that you know you know nothing about. You know what do you know about what governs the self, what governs nature? Right. You know nothing. So you realize that you know. It means that you. It's not just a thought or an idea. Is that you know you realize that you have a deep inner realization of that. That's the first step. Second step would be you want to relate with that force. You want to become one with that force because when you relationships, you want to become one with the other. Even if they are physical, you know, that is what the essence of relationship is. So you want to become one with that other, with capital O. No? Second step, to try to become the other still a capital O. And finally, the realization that there is no other. You and the other are one. Always have been, always will be. You just think that you are it. Hmm. First time I hear a Catholic say something. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I know. That's Catholic. Yes. So this is, for example, I use in, in, in my courses lots of videos of a Buddhist, of a Catholic, of Guru Raj, you know, and you know, and I make them see that it is common, yeah, and, and you know, we make honor to our emblem in this way that we are not on Buddhism or on Hinduism or in this, we are. So going back to the satsang of Guru Raj now, because it still has many important things. Oye, que se ha quedado sin batería esto. Sorry. 
where I wish we are. They would like to learn themselves. And with this sense, do one can find greater happiness and peace. Now there are three things which you must indulge in. Is sense, common sense, and nonsense. This means the following. Mm. That those are the three things you have to apply in your day-to-day -day life. Sense. Sense means direction. You have to have a sense. You have to find a sense in your life, which is the same thing as finding a direction. You know, I want to be a painter, I want to, you know, a direction in your life. That's sense. A direction is just like the compass. You go northwest has nothing to do with what you are going to do in the day, for example. You want to be Nobel Prize in physics. Right, today what you can do is sign down for college and mm. watch a couple of videos of MIT and maybe read a little bit uh, something. And that's all you can do today in that direction. So you worry about, you, you know where you are going, but you apply common sense, and common sense is the practical, the practical, practical sense, the practical, the practicality of things. So no, sense is direction. Common sense is the practicality of things, which means that day by day you have to be practical. And nonsense is the ability to realize that this is all nonsense that in reality you want to get there but you are <laughs> getting nowhere and then you find the joke of all it and then you laugh yes but you have to know it's a joke so we continue people say they don't even understand the word nonsense hmm? they don't make sense of anything and it's fun the greatest humor in life is based on nonsense. Hmm? And when you view it with common sense, you develop the real sense of what is nonsense. It's beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. So man should be a combination of all these three things sense, common sense, and nonsense. And it's a greater art to, to be able to view nonsense with sense. You see the humor in it then. And you find the life to be filled with fun. Because you now have developed the sense and the common sense to see the nonsense and nonsense is Humor. You become humorous. Huh? Not humorous, humorous. <laughs> For who wants a tumor on the brain? I think I must start doing operations on all of you. Cut away those tumors. It's a pressure on the brain unnecessary pressure and that is why you find things going wrong or right because of that pressure on the so as it starts this video you know if you little by little start seeing everything good then one of the old drop and you see only yeah, God yeah. Uh, that pressure in the brain, that mind chatter, is the one that makes you see things going right and going wrong. And it's unnecessary. It's unnecessary to live, it's unnecessary to evolve, and it's unnecessary to have a full life. It's 
necessary. Unnecessary. Oh, unnecessary. Mm -hmm. So you really can discard it because that pressure in the brain, that mind chatter, it's only stupidities. And now Muruji explains this, you see, you would, it would be better that instead of a brain you had, uh, how do you say, sawdust or... Uh, <laughs> it continues like that now. In box. There's another way out. Hmm? Instead of having a brain in the head, uh, for it was sawdust. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Then you won't be able to think all the rubbish you think about. Huh? Yes. But feel. 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 Feel the joy. Feel the beauty. Hmm? Which means we are always thinking and we think that we are wise. <laughs> or that our thoughts are really intelligent mm -hmm. which you know how many originals original thoughts has a person in one lifetime mm -hmm. none, none. Most, of, m most of them none mm -hmm. most of them are re regular I mean an original thought is like like Einstein when he said ah, energy equals MC squared that's original <laughs> nobody <laughs> thought that before how many original thoughts you have? It's all re regurgitated thoughts, uh, and most of them are stupid. You know, <laughs> most of the time, how many hours of those 16 hours, how many hours are you creative in your thinking, or contemplative in your thinking? Uh, or, or, or you are meditating, because the rest of the time you are just producing bullshit in the mind, <laughs> literally. It's a bullshit producer. <laughs> <laughs> and we think, and we always try to think, but feel. Right. We've been taught not to feel. Mm. Yeah. Women do it better. That's why there are more women in the meditation environment. Uh, men are worse to, to, with the feelings. It's kind of more difficult for them to feel. But you have to learn to feel the things. When you speak with someone, try to feel the person, not think about the person. Try to feel her. Try to feel what the other person is feeling. And then her body will speak to you, her words will be much more clearer to you, because you are connecting with the feeling. So feel. Don't think so much about things. Try to feel the things. That's the message. Yes, and you will see with clear eyes uh, all the beauty, beauty around you. Let me wipe my eyes. <laughs> you know, I was telling someone you know, the two most sensitive, sensitive parts of me is uh, my feet, the soles of my feet, and my eyes. You know why it has why my feet has become so sensitive. <coughs> it's because of walking around <coughs> walking around the stupid world. <laughs> and I can feel all the rubbish that's going on in this world. And that's why my feet are so sensitive. And why are my eyes so sensitive? because I see all the rubbish on me, which should not be there. But it's helped me hmm? by feeling with the feet and seeing with the eyes. It has helped me to become more and more compassionate. Hmm? And it, it has made me more and more kind. It has made me feel more that if you have a headache, I feel your headache. If you have a toe ache, I feel it too. And if you have a bottom ache, there's another word for that. <laughs> I feel that too. <laughs> it is a bit terrible, isn't it? Huh? 
to that. Tonight we must remember to bring a, a blanket down. Is that, no, you need that, darling. No, right here, you need it. Uh, Aren't you using that? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, you see, I was feeling cold, and now you guys are trying to heat me up. <laughs> Look at the contrast. And aren't both beautiful? Nothing wrong with coldness. It is nature. Hmm? And nothing wrong with heat. Too. So you accept them equally. Hmm? With equal eyes. We tend to, you know, mm, we, you have to learn to accept equally good things and bad, what we call good things and bad things, you know, a critic or a, how do you say, or a praise. Accept them both equally, not, you know, one better than the other. You have to develop equanimity. So you accept success and failure, uh, critics and praises, you know, accept duality equally, which means some days, you know, it's like the sea. If you live by the sea, like I do, some days the sea is, you know, calm. very calm. calm. And some days the sea is rough and mm -hmm. there are big waves. Mm -hmm. And you can enjoy them both. You can, if it's calm, you can do diving. If it is rough, you can do surf. But you can enjoy both kind of things. Critics and praises are enjoyable. Failure and success both are enjoyable if you accept them equally. If you are pursuing one and escaping from the other, you are caught. So that's another important message mm -hmm. of this sense. With equal eyes. And when you can see things with equal eyes, you become one pointed. And when one is one-pointed in any endeavor, life becomes more happy. Yes. So scatter brains, gather, your, gather yourself together. <laughs> Every sentence I would speak is a poem in itself. And poetry is something that rolls up within you. It's not the mind at work, it is the heart at work, expressing itself spontaneously. And that is what we need. That's what we need, the spontaneity of life, where we just flow, and flow very gracefully. And when you follow, flow through life gracefully, you attract more and more grace to yourself. That's your ninety percent. Do you understand? Your ten percent is just to be gracious. And the ninety percent of grace just dawns on you. It does not wait to come in by the door. Yeah. So always waiting at the door. And your ten percent is in opening the door to let it in. Mm. If the room is stuffy, what do you have to do? You just have to open the window, yeah? and the air, fresh air, will come in by itself. You don't need to go and call it. Mm. Mm. Like another analogy I've used somewhere, I don't know where. 
You don't need to go and chase butterflies huh? all over the field. Make your garden beautiful and the butterflies will automatically come. Yes, eh? Yeah. And that is how life is lived. Uh, so that is how the beauty of life is received. Uh, when you say, ah, in gratitude, in thanksgiving, that Lord, uh, you have been so merciful to me. So this is it. What is the name of this one? Is it the beauty around us? So do you know? Uh, no, I call it MTSP. <laughs> <laughs> But it's a, a, you know, if you go into the Guru Rajananda Yogi mm -hmm. thing and you go to videos, you know, you just go till you find it. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't remember uh, the name, uh, what name did I put it. Mm -hmm. But I can find it for you if you are interested, I can give you the reference, US so and so, whatever the case. Mm -hmm. If you want the reference. I can give it to you, but not now, because I don't have my index here. Okay. So, questions? No. A, a, a little time for questions. If you have any. <laughs> no, I mean, it's great. You know, it's just so... Nothing to say about it. So powerful and so spot on and so... I have one question. Before, in the beginning when I saw Guru Raj, I was like scared of him. <laughs> now I love him, but what's that change? No, well, you know, um, Guru Raj uh, was a very powerful expression of that consciousness which is eternally present. And then, you know, in that sense, is a symbol that puts you in contact with that consciousness. And that you love him, like you love Buddha, or you love Jesus, or you love Saint John of the Cross, or you name it, you know, as you love any, any, any expression of that consciousness, which is powerful and pure enough. So if there are not more questions, I have to say that I am tired because I started this morning yeah. at 5 o'clock with a call of Madrid yeah. and, yeah. <laughs> and the rest, uh, we can do it next Saturday. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Saturday will be probably more, more. Yeah, so Jeff was going to join us, but I'm going to call him and say, look, we'll do it next Saturday. <laughs> So I'll do the thing with Jeff on Saturday. Thank you. Thank you. So, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Hope you enjoyed the day, that it you were okay, blessed. that thank it you. has been fruitful for you. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> were you intimidated? I was just in... You didn't feel good at the gym. So yeah, next not, not Saturday will be recorded so we can see it on Sunday or something. Oh yeah, like next Saturday will be recorded. This has been recorded. Right, I'm going right, to upload right, it like, now. Yeah, exactly. mm. In a couple of minutes I will upload it. If you get yeah, into the platform that I've sent you the invitation, you have everything there. Yeah. And I we put these satsangs there also, so you will be able to see the satsangs because I will put them there. All these the one of Tikna Chan, all of them. Kim. We won't see you next Saturday.